Today we'll be talking about split function primarily. Uh, obviously we'll be covering some other functions and some uh, interesting ways you could apply split function but primarily it's going to be about split functions so I'm going to go ahead uh, we're not going to be using any existing data so I'm going to start with a new spreadsheet let me name this split function as usual uh, all the links uh, and all the worksheets uh, for this tutorial will be under the video so you can use them anytime you want so uh, first I will need some data for my split function so what I'm going to do uh, go to New York Times and while we're on it we'll learn some other functions and in New York Times we have a lot of sections, right? So if I go under the sections link all the way on top left, you'll see we have all these different sections. For example, we have the section for the US and under the US section we have subsections like education. So I'm gonna go there, it's good enough. So that's our education. We see some of the latest articles posted on the New York Times. So uh, what we will do right now, uh, we'll f try to find the RSS feed. So on the New York Times, that's under mytimes.com slash RSS. So here are their RSS feeds. So I'm going to go under the same. If you remember, it was under the US education. So there we are, US education so there is our RSS feed so we're going to import this to Google Sheets so I'm going to copy this I'm going to go to my new Google Sheets tab and I'll start with a function called import feed so import feed is a function uh, that will let you import RSS feeds basically and uh, or what is uh, the RSS basically is a type of XML format. So this is a simplified version, I guess you could say of an XML. So if you wanted to dig deeper into it, you could also look into import XML function. But for now, uh, the first argument in this function is the URL. It has to be string, so therefore, quote, I'm going to paste the RSS link and quote. That's our RSS link. So the second portion of this links will be what I'm trying to get out of that link. So in our RSS, basically what I'm gonna try to do is just get this titles for our articles that we have. So if we look under our RSS right here, uh, and it helps if you understand RSS or some HTML, but if you don't, even then it's not a big deal. So I'm looking for this item section. So if you look at this is the first item that shows up here and under the item there is title. And that's the title for our first article. So at some point there's gonna be another item and there it is, and there is the title for the next item, and so on. So to breach to those titles, what I'm going to do is provide a string items title. And again, this video is primarily about split functions, so I'm not really gonna go into much of details how to use import feed function, and so on. Uh, you may want to watch another video that covers that in detail. Now the next thing is headers. So this is a Boolean, so true or false argument. So whether you want uh, basically the title or the header or the column label on top. So I guess I'll put in true. So we'll have the column label in there. So, and the last argument is how many items we want. I'm not gonna use it, it's optional, so I'll just close this. So there is my 
import feed function. I'm going to hit enter and everything went well. As you can see, if I double click, see the first article is Google effect rubs off whatever that is. So there it is. That's the first one. Then this probably should be the second one. Uh, no, I guess the second one is this one future of F bombs. If we can find where that comes from, that would be nice. Ah, I guess it comes from here. Interesting. So, so it goes. So there it is. Now we have some data. So now that we have these titles, we would like to use our split function. So what is a split function? So basically, uh, easy way to say a split function if you've ever used in Excel like text to columns functionality that's basically you can think about it kind of like that functionality only inside of a function which gives you some advantages and we'll really talk about those advantages in just a little bit but if you just go ahead and just type equals split right here that's our function so the first argument is the text we're working with. So I'm working with this text on the left, comma. And the second parameter is our delimiter. So if I want a delimiter, basically the separator, as a space, then I'll go quote, space, quote. Now, there's a third argument in this function. And this is only going to make any difference like the third argument if you have more than one character here right here between these two quotes right now i have just one character so it doesn't really matter so i'm just going to close this down and hit enter so right now you'll see how we split that text using the space and all of the cells going to the right so just like that so now let's look into this having a second character option. So let's say I have a second character and I want to split by both of them. And one of my character is going to be the space and the other character is going to be this lowercase o char character. So we have one on this on and another one on this town. So I'm going to basically just after the space type the character lowercase o. So if I hit enter, you'll see how the text is being split. There it is. Oh, there is also I have this double o here. Uh, now this is case sensitive, so you'll see that this off, which is uppercase, isn't being touched. So now we're using both characters to split the text, the space and the lowercase o. Now, if you want the uppercase o, you can just add it. So you can just keep adding all the characters you want to split by. So this is where this last argument makes a difference. So if I do another comma, and there it is, this argument split by each. So right now, by default, that's pretty much what it's doing. It's basically splitting by each. So that's if we do true, we should really get the same result. But if I change that last argument to false, hit enter, see, nothing happened. So everything is in one single cell. There it is. So right now what it's doing, instead of splitting by each one of these characters, it's looking at this entire character set as one string. So if what I'm splitting by is, let's say space on space, I can still do that, but now I'm looking at all those characters as one whole long string that I wanna split by, instead of just having many characters we're splitting by. So there you go, so obviously you can just drag this down uh, and get it for each one of these characters. But I'm going to go ahead, just since we've covered what this are, this, so we know what those are, so I'm going to go ahead and just split it by a space. So there it is. So now we have this, all of them split by a space. And again, if I 
pull this down it's just gonna split each one of those and use the space for for that separation so now let's get to the cool part so this is like our regular text to columns now what's interesting about Google functions like this they're basically like returning an array and they're just putting this entire array in the cells going to the right however the function itself again returns an array right so therefore we'll be able to use that function inside of another function as an array so what does that mean so this brings us an interesting opportunity to make some functions that in Excel are pretty complicated very simple actually in Google Sheets so let's say what we want to return is the first word of each one of these titles we have to the left so what we can do we can wrap the split function inside of an index function so what does an index function do so let me just for those who don't know what index function does I'm just going to do a very quick explanation if you want in depth for index please watch the index function video so I'm going to go ahead and basically just type equals index and the first argument in our index function is our reference so I'm going to give it this range of numbers which is ABC so we can think about it as an array of numbers in a way so comma the next thing is our row index so there's an optional column index we're not going to be talking about it today but for row index I'm just going to type 3 and just close my quotes so what is this going to do so let's hit enter so you can see it's returning C the re reason it's returning C is basically I'm giving this array to my index function or range I guess and we basically go from top 1 two and three so the third element in this array is C so therefore it's returning that C so if I hit the second element it's gonna return the B and the first element it's gonna return that A so that's basically our index function in a nutshell so now I'm gonna go back here and as I said what I'm going to do I'm going to basically just select the split function without the equal sign and I'll press control X or command X if you're a on a, if you're on a Mac right and as I said we're we want to put this split function inside of our index function so I'm gonna go ahead and type index there we are so the first thing we want to do is the reference so the reference if you remember is an array so what I'm going to do just paste my split function right there as my reference so that split function is gonna return an array and I'm gonna do a comma now I want the first element in that array so there it is one and close that parentheses hit enter and there it is I'm getting the first word of the title so if I send this down you can see that I'm getting the first word of all of those different titles we have on the left so here we go so that's our split with index so this is how we can oops let's get this back return so first word So obviously, if you wanted to get the second word, that's pretty straightforward, right? So second word. So you would just go ahead and do your index function. And then I'm going to paste my split function. And instead of one, it's going to be two. So very easy to get the first, the second, the third, whichever word you need out of that shouldn't be a problem at all so that should be nice so now let's say what we're trying to accomplish is get the last word 
So, for example, the town, hit, schools, unionize, those are the words we're trying to get, the last word. So how can we get the last word? So, first of all, we have to figure out, uh, so what do we do here? Uh, we basically provide the index, which word we want. So uh, that's like if we had to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? That's our word eleven here. But it could be different, so it's not always going to be number eleven. So what do we have to do? We have to figure out a dynamic way to figure out what is the last word in each one of these. So what I'm going to do, actually, before we get the last word, let's get the last word number, I guess, or index, whatever we want to do. So how can I get the last word index? Well, as I said, split function returns an array. So an array is going to give me a number of items. So if I had a way to know how many items that array has, the, that would be basically the last item. So how can we do that? Simply by using our counter function. So there is, by the way, you have to be careful, there is a function count. So count only will count if it's a number. Now in our case, obviously it's not number. So it's gonna be counter to get numbers and so basically it's alphanumeric count. So counter, so the first argument is the range. In our case, the range is going to be our split function. So I'm just going to do split function and close our parentheses for a counter function, hit enter, and you see it's number 11, great. Now let's see if we're getting the right thing for them. So there it is, we got number 11 for this, number 10 for this, number 7 for this. So that's how we can get the count and figure out which number that is. So that's nice, right? So now that we have the last word, count, we can also get just the last word. So how are we going to do that? So pretty simple, we'll go and type our index function. The first one, it will be the reference. So the reference, if you remember, is going to be the array. So I'm going to paste our split function. That's going to give me that array. I'm going to do comma, and this is where we get the number. So I could simply click on this D2 cell, but I want this function to be independent from this column to the left. So therefore, what I'm going to do is just give it counter function just like that, and paste my split function one more time. I'll do another comma to close the counter function here, and I'll need another comma to finally close my index. And you can see it's already displaying that the answer is town. That's great, that means we're getting the right thing. I'm gonna double click to send this down, and you can see town, hit, schools, unionize. There we are, we got the last word of each one of those. And again, if you wanted the second to last, that should be a pretty easy one to figure out now. So to really save time here, I'm not going to type the whole thing in. I'll simply just copy this entire function here, escape to get out of that. I'll paste it in here. And instead of having counter return, we want one less, so I simply do minus one. So there it is, it's gonna be second to last. So there it is, we can see that it works just fine. It's looking good. So those are some of, you know, some interesting ways you can actually apply our split function and use it together with our index and counter function to do some cool tricks.